Well, good morning, everybody. Thursday morning in Sydney, but it's Wednesday evening in Florida, isn't it? Yes, it is. 5 p.m. 5 p.m. I have the lovely Kathleen Steffi here with me today. How are you doing, Kathleen? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us from the other part of the world. It's episode 24 of Soul Searching, the Soul Recruitment Podcast. And today we're going to be chatting about some recruitment topics that are very close to both our hearts because we're both recruiters, Kathleen and I. We're going to be chatting about why recruiters have a bad reputation. And we're also going to be uncovering the retained versus contingency recruitment model. So everybody out there who wants to know a little bit more about who Kathleen is, Kathleen Steffi is the CEO and founder of Naviga Recruiting and Executive Search, a professional service provider of executive sales and marketing recruiting services for businesses across North America. As an executive search owner, Kathleen has a unique background where she has led corporate talent acquisition teams prior to starting Naviga Recruiting and Executive Search 18 years ago. Kathleen takes on the role of Chief Talent Officer by leading a team of individuals who take pride in finding the most qualified sales and marketing candidates for companies around the globe. And she also works directly with executives, hiring managers and internal HR professional to solve talent acquisition obstacles that get in the way of hiring with efficiency, quality and speed. So welcome Kathleen. Thank you. All that's missing is some red carpet there for me, I feel. Yeah, let me just roll that. out the proverbial red carpet for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, you've been, you've done it all. You've, you know, been in the recruitment industry for a long time. Um, tell us more about your backstory and how you got into the recruitment industry. And yeah, we'd love to hear more about that. All right. Um, I started in a very small agency in Chicago. Wow. And even before that, when I graduated college, I remember going and interviewing at other staffing firms. And one of them said to me, you can't handle this business. Uh -huh. He said, that it's a very tough business and you seem very nice, too nice for this business. And I was like, oh, interesting. <laughs> um, and I was so young. I mean, I was so young when I started, I think 21 I graduated wow. college, undergraduate, 21. So, um, but I, I just started in an agency and then one of my clients um, recruited me to be on their corporate recruiting team. Uh -huh. And I was in corporate recruiting for, you know, many years and yeah. worked my way up into corporate recruiting leadership. Mm -hmm. And I did an expat actually in Amsterdam uh, for a couple years. Oh, that'd uh, been, where that would have been interesting. Oh, it was so fun. It was so fun. Before kids, I was single. It was such a great oh, time. Recruiting in um, Amsterdam. How cool is that? <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. But I was recruiting all over Europe because uh -huh. uh, we were building a European division of the software company. Yep. And I was, like I said, an expat. It was so much fun. And then when 9-11 hit, you know, they sent us back to the States because business yeah. was tanking. And I said, what do I want to do? And so I started recruiting and I started Naviga and slowly grew it. And now we work with major companies around the world and, um, you know, we're just, we're having fun doing it. <laughs> ah, well done. That's what a great story. I mean, it's so nice to see, you know, a fellow recruiter that's doing so well. And, you know, you mentioned just before we started that business has been pretty good this year, which is great to hear. Yes, you know what? Yeah. It's kicked major major butt this year we're that's year awesome. over year right now 11 percent wow. um yeah that's with pretty much all of march and april being yeah. completely silent so yeah. i'm really grateful and i'm so thankful for my team yep that's fantastic how many people in the team we have six six lovely yeah and so what do you love about recruiting these days and what don't you like about recruiting <laughs> kind of a loaded question. I know. I love so many things about recruiting. I, I'm yeah. still not bored with recruiting. And mm. I swear I'm not just saying that. I swear <laughs> to you. I think because it's so up and down, yeah. you know, and there's just so many moving parts. And I constantly yeah. have to pivot for always learning new industries and yeah. Yeah. new yeah. positions, 
all this stuff. So um, that's what I love about it. It keeps me challenged for sure and on my toes. I need I need to always be on my toes yeah, and being yeah. challenged. Um, and what don't I love about it? I don't know. What don't I love? Um, I hate, you know, if, if I really like a candidate a lot and we've developed a relationship, you know, through the process and then yeah. they don't go with that person, I still yeah. to this day, you know, if I like that individual, I hate giving them that news. I'll give yeah. it to them and it doesn't, trust me, I sleep at night and all that, but yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't like, I don't like giving that bad news if they really wanted it. So yeah, so true. I mean, and I agree with you. Like for me, recruiting is like a, it's, it's, I love the thrill of the chase. That's what keeps me going, you know, trying yeah. to, trying to find the right candidate for the right client and closing that deal, you know, and, and the ups and downs of the whole process. But I love the thrill of the chase. That's what keeps me going for over 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, me too. Yeah. But there's no secret, you know, and I hear this all the time and everybody else out there, I'm sure, you know, recruiters can have a bad reputation. We're sometimes thought out as secondhand car salesmen. No offense to any secondhand car salesmen out there. But, you know, we don't have the best rap. Um, and there are some amazing recruiters and there are some not so great recruiters. But why do you think that is? Why is it that recruiting has such a reputation? Um, I think that they deserve that reputation. I mean, I, I would agree. A lot of recruiters that I, you know, come across in my day, um, they don't care. Yeah. They don't go deep. They're not in it for repeat customers. They're not in it for a long-term candidate placement. Um, they don't ask, you know, really, really good questions to understand what the profile is. Yeah. And that's why. You know, there's a lot of people who get into this industry who just don't care. And, yeah. you know, it's unfortunate. I don't feel that makes my job harder. I feel it makes it so much easier to shine. Yep, I agree with you there. Yep. Yep. Yeah? I yeah. agree with you because if you can, sometimes if you can just um, service the client just a little better, you know, obviously you're going to try and do much better. But even if you just give that little extra bit of care to a client or a candidate, you're all, you're all, you're risen to the top of the bar. Yes, it's insane, 100%. really. When you think about it, it really is. It, it yeah. just so you you. It's I just say you keep being bad. You know, all you recruiters out there, because it does not take a lot to differentiate. And I'm not saying that we don't do a lot to differentiate because we do. I we That's have hilarious. so many differentiators. Like there's. You could peel me back about a thousand times and learn about all these different things. Nice. You really could, um, honestly. Um, but, you know, it's, you know, they, they make that type of name for themselves, I feel. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the one gripe that I always get from candidates is recruiters never return a phone call. Recruiters never give them feedback. And if I yeah. can just do that, return every phone call, every message that I get, return every LinkedIn message, every text, and if I can just give people feedback along the way, I always say that I like to keep my candidates close to me throughout the process. That already is incredible. And people say, wow, nobody does that. And that's just what customer service 101. Yep, I agree. It's I kind agree. of crazy when you think about it. Yeah. So yeah, so I mean, hopefully that the, the recruitment industry is, it has been become more mature and more sophisticated over the years. and. We're starting to shed that reputation a little bit. Um, yeah. And again, for the clients out there and potential clients, it's just about finding the right fit for you. You know, not every recruiter, not every recruiter's personality is going to fit with a client as well. So once you find that fit, that can be a fantastic marriage and it's a partnership. It's not just, you know, a transaction. It's a partnership for the long term. Absolutely. Uh, I, agree. I, yeah. I agree. I agree. I, I see it that way too, where when, when employers call us to do business, not always will we do business with them if things yep. just aren't lining up, right? So true. So true you know? Yeah, absolutely. Same thing. We, have to have, we have to have synergies, partnerships, same values, you know, same expectations and all, all that. It goes both ways. Yeah. I mean, recruiters have to qualify every job order and every client just the same because sometimes it's not worth putting our energy into something that might not, you know, give us results or might not 
some, a job that might not be fillable or a client that might just be too difficult to work with or whatever. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Who needs it? Yeah. The older Who we get, it? right? <laughs> the older we get. Yeah. Maybe when I first started Naviga, I, I, I accepted so many things and whatever, you know, but the older you get and the more you learn that life's too short. We've got we've to do solid, clean, good business together and, yeah. and let's just get it done. So true. And that, that's actually a really perfect segue into the next part of this conversation, which is all about contingency versus retain recruitment models. Yeah. I mean, and the reason that recruiters up till now or generally have to really qualify things so well is that a lot of the time we're not retained. Um, and, you know, that's changing more and more these days. But we have to really use our time effectively. So yeah. let's chat about, maybe I'll, I'll throw this back to you. I mean, give us your definition or your understanding of the difference between the retained model and the contingency recruitment model for all those people that might not know that terminology. Yeah. Well, retained recruiting model. So we're a retained search firm. We'll, yeah. we, we will do some contingency searches, but for the yeah. most part, we do retained search. And what that means is that um, we require compensation up front to retain our services. Yep. So it's a, essentially a portion of the fee to say, um, you're investing in this partnership and I know that I'm gonna make a placement or, or our odds are pretty high that we'll yep. make a placement. It's not yep. always guaranteed, no. even with retained. <laughs> True. So, no. yeah. And, and sometimes and it's with time, it's just how long is it gonna take? You'll get there, but it's just how long? Yeah, for sure. And when you're selling a retained service, you're really selling our process yep. and our quality and what that looks like, what they're going to get and how they're going to feel comfortable throughout the process. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, mm -hmm. really it's about that process and that's what they want to know about mostly. Mm -hmm. And also they want to know track record. A lot of references are called a lot of case studies are sent to show yep. them what we can do. Um, but yeah, that's the difference in the retained model um, yeah. versus and contingent. How do you find your clients receive that? Do most people say great or do you have a lot of pushback when you're selling retained? Um, it depends. I'd say retained isn't for everyone. Mm -hmm. It Retained certainly isn't for the employers who only want to partner with one, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so that right. eats them out. I yep. mean, retain search, they don't want to mess with 20 vendors or 10 vendors, recruiting vendors. They just want one. They have faith in that one. They've done yep. that due diligence on that one. And we're going to get the project done, exactly. you know? Yep. So, yep. Um, yeah. So true. And I, I love the retain model because, and I always, you know, outline this to my potential clients when I'm about to um, move into a, a secure a retain model is that I do it for a number of reasons. You know, one of the reasons as well is commitment on the client side yes. to the project. Because a lot of the times people can say, yeah, let's great, look, find this, find that, find that. And then three weeks later, oh, we're going to put that one on hold. Or we've just, yeah. we've, just, uh, re we've just kind of referred someone internally for that one. Or we've just found another candidate some other way. And you might have gone and done a lot of work and put a lot of energy and investment into marketing and advertising and networking and referrals and you know, all of that costs money and time. So for me, it's also a level of commitment on the client side to yep. say, we're serious. And I find that if you have a retained model, it does give you faster feedback, um, more insightful um, understanding of the role and the, and the, the organization, yep. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because there's a vested interest on both sides. Yeah. I used to be a contingency firm when yep. I started out. Yep. And I just got sick of it. I, I got sick of giving the level of quality and commitment on our end. Yep. And then sometimes getting nothing in return. Yep. Yeah. I'm like, this is, I'm just sick of this. Forget it. Yep. And literally I, I said it like that one day, forget it. From yep. now on, we're, we're asking for, you know, 3000 up front. And yep. what's amazing is the minute we started asking, we received. Yeah. Yeah. We because received. there's a level of professionalism and, um, confidence that comes with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and trust in the process. So. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And, you know, I don't charge a lot up front, but I charge a, a small fee just as a level of commitment 
and it gives me, you know, a much better insight and uh, quality relationship moving forward. You know, and I found that works really well. You know, I, I used to be like you. I used to do a lot of contingency work and I thought this model is broken. This cannot continue, particularly in this day and age. There's no yeah. one other industry that does that. <laughs> right. What it's incredible. Yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. So well, it's, I'm it's, glad it's we both amazing. made that change. Now, will you still do contingency here and there? Um, I'll only do contingency if, I, if I'm, spe and I do, I specialize in a very particular niche. Yeah. And then if I'm already working with a lot of clients in that niche, I might take on a contingent role because I'm already working that niche. But I'm not going to go and reinvent the wheel and put in a lot of energy up front to, to create a whole campaign when I might not get anything in return. Yeah. Yep. It's all about okay. economies of scale and it's all about leverage. Yeah, and I, that's what I like. That's why I like. That's what I like about um, specialising in a certain area as well, because it really allows you to have more leverage over candidates and different clients within that one area of specialty, rather than having to recreate the wheel with every single role you recruit for. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. so interesting. You know, it's like if somebody won't go retained, but they will pay $35,000 total if the person's, you know, plays. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute here, what's off? Why won't yeah. you invest in some type of relationship, but you will pay total? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Very you have true. to just question it. So. Very true. Well, anyway, that's, and how long have you been, you know, working that, conti that retain model for now? Yeah, at least 10 years now. Wow, that's fantastic. Well done. Yeah. 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 Well done. And would you say a lot of your colleagues, your peers do the same thing? Um, like other recruiting firm owners or, mm, or other or competition? Um, yeah. Yeah. Some of them do, not all of them. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, awesome. Yeah. I'd love to know, I mean, obviously I'm in Sydney, I'm in Australia, we work in a particular way. Are there any nuances that you know of working in the States, recruiting in the States? that you think might be different to the way we do things here? Or do you think it's the process is very much the same? Well, I've talked to a lot of people in the UK um, yeah. and I know you're not in the UK, but, um, and you know, basically things are the same, Yeah. you know, and when I was doing business in Amsterdam and choosing different recruiting firms to yeah. do business with, basically it was the same. I will tell you one difference is, is that a lot of the European firms they will not negotiate on price at all. Right. <laughs> like, wow. I don't know how it is for you, but at all, I remember, I, and they just wouldn't even budge. You're like, nope, sorry. And I was like, okay. Wow, that's uh, pretty strong. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Um, yeah, but I mean, in the US, there's some negotiation, some, you yeah. know, we leave a little room for it or we, or we say, what is it in our process that you don't want? Yep. You know, if you want a lower fee, what is it that we should take away in our process, right? True, or like should, what should we do? On yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Um, what about you? Have you pretty heard much the same. I know, yeah. like from speaking to a few recruiters overseas as well in the States, it does seem like it's very much the same. Um, it's either that contingency versus retained model and it's very relationship driven and the process seems to be exactly the same. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I'm, I'm doing a lot more work with um, virtual, in a virtual interview process and using the virtual means and technology to help me execute the process throughout, which has been fantastic, particularly this year. Um, yeah. Do you guys do a lot of that or is it still a lot of face-to-face? -face no, it is a ton of virtual. I moved my team six years ago to 100% virtual. Yeah. Uh, I just did it anyway, because we do business all across the United States, yep. and yep. we yep. don't see candidates face-to-face -face across the United States, and so I was like, well, why don't we just try it at home, and it works beautifully, it and does. so with the pandemic, this has been seamless for us, you know, while the world was trying to figure this out for the first, you know, three months, we were just watching and saying, okay. You know, we've been doing this. I mean, we did get a lot of tips, yeah. like a fun tips that people do so much now on Zoom for culture and all that. Because, like, 
there was so much emphasis on Zoom info. How do you keep it fun? How do you keep it? Yeah. I'm like, man, I guess I'm not doing enough, you know, having been doing this for six years remotely. So we got some tips that way. But for the most part, you know, our business, because our, our you know, price point is, is what it is, we really don't need to see face to face to close a deal for you know, twenty thousand dollars and or thirty five or forty thousand dollars for the most part, you know? Yeah. So it yeah. just yeah, it, yeah. we do video all the time with yeah. our clients. Yeah. Yeah. Totally totally agree. And apologies to the audience. I think there's a bit of a, a reverb in this connection, but you know, we'll have to just go with it. Um but okay. yeah, what's really interesting to me as well, I've always thought about the States is in in the States, people tend to move cities for a job whereas in australia we don't tend to do that as much so that kind of lends okay. itself to the way that we're talking about um using technology in our process as well would you say that's true oh it's very true people yep. move states they yep. move cities yep. for, for an opportunity yep. yes for yep. their career for their career whereas here we don't we don't tend to do that as much we we tend to find the best opportunity we can that's going to fit into our life here where we're settled. That's, that's okay. one, quite, it's quite a strong difference between working here and in the States, I think. Yeah. I will say the older you get, I, I find that um, people, let's talk about men, uh, that the gender, um, they don't tend to move around as they used to 15 mm. years ago or 20 years ago. They, they do want to stay where their kids are in school until the kids graduate. And that is a huge shift um, compared to when I first started out. Yeah, <laughs> men yeah. would men would relocate anywhere. They would, if a child was, you know, one year close to graduating high school they in America, they, they wouldn't care. But now they, they say the kid could be a sophomore or a freshman in, in high school and say, I can't, I have a child who, and, and it, it's kind of um, indicative of what's happened in society and the culture, um, you know, with these generations where it's more um, family focused and yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, uh, that's that's really interesting because you know definitely that that that's the kind of thing that happens here much more. You know, that would uh -huh. never happen that someone would just a year before someone their child was being was going to graduate yeah. up and move and to a whole new school that would just be, rarely happen. <laughs> Fascinating. It used to happen all the time. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. So, um, Kathleen, tell us more about Naviga and um, about how you guys work and, and what specialities you work with. Naviga. Um, sales and marketing is our yep. specialty in operations. So okay. all levels across sales, marketing, and operations um, right. across the United States. And we do it for companies who are around the world. Um and companies in the United States. Um, right now we're working on a search for a really, really cool company um, that's headquartered out of Dubai. Oh, and wow. they're looking for, yeah, a vice president of sales in the United States, um, but to relocate that person to Dubai uh, just for the knowledge of the industry because in the US it's so much more progressive in that yeah. particular industry. So. I mean, that's just one example. I mean, we, we do business across so many industries. Um, and you know, what's interesting is that I think because I was an expat in Amsterdam mm -hmm. and I, I have that on a page in my profile. And we also have some words that we use that may be uh, universal across the world when it comes to recruitment, not just the United States. We get so many companies overseas that need come to my business for wow. help to find people in the United States for their business. Like it, for the first time they want to enter the U S and they hire their first ever chief marketing officer and things of that nature. It's, it's interesting how the internet works that way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you get a lot of your clients? Is it referral based? Is it repeat customers or is it SEO or podcasting? Appearances? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, podcasting. Appearances. <laughs> Not, I don't, I don't think it's podcast appearances, <laughs> but um, I, I don't at all. Um, they might run after seeing these things. So. No, but um, I, I have to tell you something I'm extremely blessed about and grateful. They come to me and they have for years. That's great. Uh, 
we have, we used to, when we first started out as a business, do Google PPC. So we would spend so much money on Google advertising. Um, and then we optimized our website and did a ton of backend SEO and stuff. And so we, we basically flip flop that where we, we don't pay anything in advertising and haven't for years. And, but the lead sources keep coming to us even greater than they were. Yeah. Um, and they just fill out a form or, or call our number and, and they say, we need, we need your help. <laughs> and they That's have for years. I know that is a huge differentiator, but I, I think it's because of the amount of years we've been dealing with marketing on the web, you know, and it, it just doesn't happen. Overnight, and I know that. So, yeah. And that's actually a really good point you brought up marketing on the web. Do you, do you see that uh, LinkedIn, for example, using LinkedIn as a marketing tool to market yeah. your services and build brand is really important these days. Cause that's something that I think is extremely important, but what's your take on that? I would agree. I think yeah. it's essential. I think it's essential. I think you need to stay relevant. I think you need to have as much content up there as possible. That's yeah. speaking to your different personas and audiences and not just candidates, right? A lot of recruiting firms are so focused on candidates mm -hmm. and they're not thinking about the audience that needs to purchase your service. So you, you really have to position yourself on LinkedIn and other places where you're communicating to that audience in such a way consistently and they see what we're doing. They're seeing the placements that are happening, yep. the level that we search for, um, the successes, testimonials and quotes, nice. you know, all types of things. It's a, it's an integrated process for sure. And it's not just one solution. Um, unfortunately LinkedIn, I feel is right now the 800 pound gorilla that everybody's out there. And, um, I get scared about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really, I really want the market to be diversifying a little bit more. And I want to see what's going to be the next thing here that kind of breaks LinkedIn down a bit. Um, Cause it, I, I don't know. I, I think we're all really, really tied to LinkedIn right now. And mm -hmm. I think we will continue to be including myself, but I'm just really curious to see what, what happens. Mm. <laughs> what happens? I mean, my, my take on it as well, as you mentioned, is really to use LinkedIn and other platforms, but LinkedIn is just such a powerful one right now, to use LinkedIn as a marketing tool more than just a candidate, a, a candidate pool. Yes, you nice. Know, you rhyme. If you can build a really strong brand that attracts candidates and clients to you, like you just mentioned, doing all those things you just mentioned, and not only relying on LinkedIn recruiter to just go out to candidates and search and target and you know, et cetera, et cetera. Also doing things like referral fees, referral campaigns, um, yeah. you know, and all the non, you know, the more traditional methods, the non-internet methods of um, finding candidates and, and talent sourcing. That's really powerful. So I think, you know, LinkedIn is amazing, but it's even yeah. stronger as a marketing tool, a marketing platform. But a lot of people don't really do that very well just yet. They're just dabbling and starting down that road. Right. I think if they're just starting that, they're very late. Mm. Um, they're very late. Mm. You know, they, but there's, there's always opportunity for sure. But if they're a business that's been around, they, they've got to catch up. They've got to catch up. I, I find that there's so much education going on yep. <laughs> about it where they, you know, as business people and owners, they need to stay relevant and, and be accountable to themselves to figure out what, what, what is going on in the universe right now in business. Where do I need to be? You know, because like I'm saying, I'm thinking ahead, what, what's going to happen? Yeah. What is going to take over LinkedIn and what's going to diversify those efforts? Yep. Um, Cause 100%. I'm even seeing, uh, sorry. Um, I'm seeing a, a sort uh, or a, a, a shift, a small shift in the effectiveness of even using LinkedIn recruiter and the response rates mm -hmm. that are happening. Mm -hmm. And I know why it is. And I'm seeing other recruiters are starting to have that issue where direct connection requests are more successful than in mails. Yep. But yet we're paying for in-mails on LinkedIn Recruiter. So, you know, I think people are starting to get scrappy and they're starting to get smart and they're start, start, starting to say, 
you know, how do we diversify? Like you said, how do you diversify and use different tools here? Yeah. And, and I agree with you. I think that's, it's really a reflection of buying psychology or um, influencing psychology these days that people don't want to be sold to. They don't want to be chased, you know, when they're ready, they will come to you. So that's why I think it's really important to use LinkedIn as a marketing tool to build your brand and create awareness for what you do in an indirect way. But yeah. when people are ready, and for example, candidates are ready or clients, they will come to you rather than you having to send them emails and direct messages. Yep. So I think that's, yep. that's, a, that's a sophisticated, that's the progression that we're all trying to search for in terms of how do we use these platforms more effectively from a wider marketing point of view. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's, so. the new, um, it's a new billboard. I mean, yeah. It's the same concept in marketing. Yeah. It's just in a different platform. Yeah. Do you use any other platforms? Yeah. Sorry? Any other platforms that you think are really important for you these days? Um, or is LinkedIn just the big monster? Um, we have a lot of success on Twitter when we start following our audiences um like vps of marketing vps of sales yep. talent acquisition business owners what happens is something very similar on linkedin because we have a twitter account and when we stay very active on twitter in terms of increase increasing our followers with the right personas the right audience the boomerang effect happens the same exact way on linkedin like we'll mm -hmm. get reach outs asking about our service, not, not every single day and not even every single week, sure. but the reality is there is some effectiveness there in using Twitter and how you're following followers and them following you back. They see what you're doing. That's so great. I like, I like it. I like it. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Well done. Yeah. And so Kathleen, yeah. if people want to get in touch with you to work with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> um, LinkedIn. Um, I mean, LinkedIn, Kathleen Steffi, I'm there. We can um, private message or you can look at NavigaRecruiting.com, our website. I'm there. Um, and so is my team. And you can just Google me, Kathleen Steffi. I'll pop up and you can, you can reach me anyway. Just don't come knocking on my door at home. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll make sure that I put all those links and uh, details in the show notes for everybody. But I thought, Kathleen, okay. before we finish up, I just want to ask you one question. Maybe for all the budding recruiters out there or the recruiters that are still developing their personality, developing their voice, developing their style, what advice would you give to upcoming recruiters? You know, you've been in the industry 20 years or so. What yeah. advice would you give to upcoming recruiters these days? Yeah, I would find a mentor you know, or mentors and just take moments to stop and ask for advice, have a virtual coffee, um, get into groups, follow recruiting groups, mm -hmm. um, you know, just get entrenched in the industry and learn from people and don't, don't get too siloed where you're only focused on you, you know, try to learn from other people. And I'd say, don't give up. Um, you can do it, you know, you've got this, it's hard. You'll have a lot of losses, but a lot of wins yep. and you know, it's a fun ride. <laughs> it is. It's one of the, one of those industries where it's not for everybody, but it's, you know, the lows are low, but the highs are incredibly high and you got to love yeah. that roller coaster and yeah. the thrill of the chase. Yeah, for and sure. It can really keep you going and it's, you know, really exciting. Yeah. Well done. Well, Kathleen, thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. You know, hopefully we've given the audience a lot of value and some nuance into understanding how the recruitment process works and the, the psychology of the recruitment industry, you know, and loads of great tips from Kathleen, who's been in the industry for so long. So really appreciate you coming on the show. I'll put the uh, links and everything in the show notes for everybody. So if anybody's looking for some sales and marketing, People across the globe, talk to Kathleen. Anything else you want to leave us with before we finish up? No, just thank you so much. Had a oh, great time. Thank you so much, Kathleen. Well, everybody, hope you had a great one. Have a fantastic day and a fantastic evening if you're in the States. And we'll see you very, very soon for another episode of Soul Searching, the Soul Recruitment Podcast. Bye for now.